Good afternoon and welcome to all of you to this uh, webinar, this online conversation organized by the European Training Foundation and specifically by its uh, community of innovative educators. And uh, this time, uh, as we typically do, we organize this webinar in collaboration with uh, a sister organization with uh, an important partner for us, the International Task Force on Teachers for Education 2030, that I typically call Teacher Task Force in a short, uh, short uh, way. And actually, uh, this event uh, is very special for us because as uh, some of you know, I guess most of you know, the main... Uh, it's basically to provide educator with educators around the, around the world with tools and approaches and ideas on how to teach in more innovative, in more inclusive, in more human-centric ways. And of course, one of the things we do is to provide tools and the resources to do this. We know that resources and tools are not enough. An innovative mindset is also needed, but of course, they help. And actually, we realized that uh, other many other organizations are doing this, and the teacher task force is doing this on a global scale. So we decided to close 2023 with this webinar, specifically uh, focusing on, uh, um, let's say, these tools and resources which are so important for teachers' innovation. So we are going to hear very quickly uh, about uh, a quick update on the community from my side, and then we're going to hear by my colleague, Yulin Van Uden, on uh, the results and reflection on what we are learning from the, from the ETF research on teaching and learning, and then we're going to uh, dive into the theme with two um, presentations, one on the ETF uh, tools and resources to support teachers' innovation by Olena Bech, who will present a couple of interesting tools. And then we're going to hear from the Teacher Task Force by Meritzel Fernandez about uh, another set of uh, important tools. The idea, of course, is not for you to use all these tools, but to be aware of what exists and, of course, to give us a feedback during and at the end of this uh, webinar about. Uh, uh, what we can do uh, to make sure that you use these tools uh, in the, the best possible way. So how can we promote the use of these tools? How can we help you uh, using these tools? Uh, and we will have time for this um, at the end of the presentation. I will just now quickly share um, three slides, no more than this. I hope you can see them because we realize that not everybody in these webinars, we are now already 89 people and some more are joining. So we realize that not all of you might know about the ETF community of innovative educators. So we wanted to quickly uh, invite you to join and tell you in, in two minutes what this community is. Basically, it is a community by educators for educators on innovation. So we have, as you can see in this slide, more than uh, 1,300 members registered in the community portal. And uh, what happened this year, let's say in 2023, uh, a, few, a few highlights. Uh, we have uh, um, created a database with some new teaching practices that you can browse through this uh, website. The link will be at the end of the presentation. You can... Uh, you can uh, receive an open badge for some specific activities that you can run through the community. Uh, you can participate like you're doing now in webinars. We have run a number of rather large webinars on issues like uh, teaching for green societies, artificial intelligence for educators and others. And you can also join some face-to-face -face events uh, like this one on the bottom right of the screen. We have something uh, in mind, of course, for 2024. The idea there is to focus for next year on specific themes uh, to structure a bit the work of the community along the year. One team theme will be STEAM, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Another one will be, obviously, artificial intelligence and teaching. And another one will be key competencies applied to innovative teaching and learning. I want uh, spoil on these, uh, provide any spoiler on these self-reflection clubs, because at the beginning of next year, all the members of the community will receive uh, an official invitation to join some of these clubs. 
But apart from these, uh, we plan to run some road shows, so to bring the community and some innovators to some major conferences in Europe and around Europe. And uh, we, we, we plan also to strengthen connection both with national projects and initiatives and with international partners, such as the teacher task force that you can see there among these, uh, these logos. And finally, uh, why you should join, uh, basically to, first of all, to be informed about what happens in the community and around the community. And of course, uh, to do a number of uh, things to promote your teaching practices, to access tools uh, and resources, uh, for example, the ones that will be presented today, to propose ideas and activities and to connect uh, with uh, uh, what is happening in the different countries uh, that are represented in the communities. There you see the website of the community uh, that we will share it also on the on the chat so you can register as we speak and an email that you can always use to contact us in case you have specific ideas or you want to be in touch with us. We try to make this community as human as possible so there are always people beyond, beyond every communication and every activity there. Okay, so I think uh, uh, I pass the message that uh, this is not a, uh, let's say, one-shot event. It's part of a process that we try since three years, uh, let's say, to motivate, uh, engage, uh, and uh, spread this innovation uh, virus among educators as much as possible. And it's good to talk about this in winter time. at least uh, in Italy. We are all a bit uh, cold in this period. And uh, I think it's uh, time for me to shut up, to welcome you again, and to give the floor to my colleague, Yolene, to hear a bit about, uh, let's say, the preliminary results and reflections from uh, research that we have been running across a couple of years already. So, Yolene, the floor is yours. Thank you. I think you can see my screen now, right? I yeah. shared a PowerPoint. Okay, great. So, um, Good afternoon, everyone. I would uh, provide you with a brief overview of what we are doing with the Creating New Learning Research and um, some indications on how we could support uh, the innovative potential of educators. And let me start by moving the slide. So let me first introduce our um, Creating New Learning Research. Uh, with the research, we aim to answer three research questions. Um, and we are studying innovation in teaching and learning with the research. And what we would like to learn here is what uh, specific characteristics of uh, innovation in teaching and learning contribute towards better learning uh, experiences and therefore also better learning outcomes. On the other hand, we are also looking at what enables uh, innovation in teaching and learning, so about what enables the, the initiation, the development, the implementation, and also the wider uptake of innovations in teaching and learning. And on the other hand, what are barriers in this regard? And we are studying this by studying um, innovative uh, practices in teaching and learning in several of our ETF partner countries. And this research is still uh, ongoing. Uh, here you can see the countries in which we are conducting uh, case study research. And you see two numbers after each country. Uh, the bold number um, mentions the number of case studies we are developing. The smaller number, like a regular normal one, uh, indicates the number of practices we are studying. So for example, in Georgia, we expect to have one case study, but we are studying three different practices. On the other hand, for example, for Serbia, you see only five, uh, because there we expected to have some similar practices which could form one case study, but in practice, they were so different that we thought it would be uh, more meaningful to have different case study descriptions for these practices. These case studies will be finalized uh, early next year, so I can not yet present these results. What we will do is, once we have all these case studies, is to do a cross analysis uh, to try to answer the research questions we presented before. But what we did in the meantime is that we conducted uh, a literature review on the enablers and barriers uh, for innovation in teaching and learning. Um, and what we saw here as well is that the literature often doesn't reflect our ETF partner countries, but I will present uh, very briefly the results of this literature review. And then also in the next phase, when we have all these case studies ready, uh, we will be able to see whether we 
see similar things uh, happening in the innovative practices in our partner countries or whether there are different things. But for today, I will focus on the results of the literature review. And with the uh, looking at the enablers and barriers that support innovation, uh, we were looking at three levels, the actor level, the organization level and the system level. So let me start with the actor level and we take the educator here as the, the main actor. Um, we see that several things uh, influence the innovative behavior of, of, of teachers, of educators, the beliefs, the personality traits, competencies and experiences, and also the motivation, self-efficacy and levels of satisfaction. And I will just give some, some examples for each. Uh, for example, there were studies showing that uh, teachers that are open to change, uh, are curious, have imagination and a wide range of interests, for example, are more likely to, to innovate. There was also a study from Smith and Smith conducted in 2020. Um, and they describe the innovator mindset in, in their study. And they say that uh, educators with the innovative mindset, they are empathetic, they are problem finders, solvers, creators, they take risks, they are well networked, uh, reflective and resilient. Some of the more personality traits. Then we see a lot of different results when we look at the competences and experiences. And I think here we also all can imagine that the experiences you had before, but also the experience you have in teaching, for example, um, will shape, could shape your innovative uh, behavior. Uh, there was one research, for example, they, they uh, related to three competences they said are very important. Uh, they mentioned a social competence, like an innovative teacher should be able to communicate with learners from different backgrounds, but also interact with various actors. Uh, they refer to the educational competence um, as promoting learning by integrating a wealth of knowledge of their subject, as well as knowledge of ped pedagogy and psychology into their teaching, and also to integrate modern uh, educational technology to enhance learning motivation, provoke critical thinking, for example, and deepen student understanding, which they called the technological competence. Another research also made this link to the use of ICT in relation to the innovation competence. And somehow then you also always start thinking, okay, is innovation the same as introducing technology? Of course, it doesn't need to be, but we see that many of the, a lot of the research focuses on that angle. Um, then I think something we can all imagine as well is that the, the educators' motivation plays an important role. But here it's also interesting to see what motivates them to innovate. And, and often when it's about intrinsic motivation, it's about their drive of educators to improve their students' learning. And I think we all will not be surprised that higher levels of self-efficacy and higher levels of satisfaction um, also relate to a higher likelihood to, to innovate. And last but not least here, it's also about the beliefs, the beliefs about what works in education and what doesn't work um, in teaching and learning. And looking at all these factors, um, we can see that they will probably be shaped by the previous experiences, by the environment you're in. So then also means that we can look about how we could support uh, innovative behavior. One important thing to add, I think here is as well is that innovation or being innovative in itself is almost never like the, the goal in education. What we would like to achieve is to improve uh, learning experiences, enhance learning experiences and learning outcomes. And therefore we might need innovative behavior. So if we move to the organizational level, uh, we will see that several factors can support uh, innovation. First of all, it's about the support, the perceived support, support offered. So here it's about support from school management, uh, but also from colleagues in general and the possibility to interact and share ideas. It really helps if there is a, a clear vision. This could be like a general vision of why uh, innovation is important. But also when you introduce a specific innovation in a context to have a, a, a clear vision on why that innovation is important and how it will be introduced. Having just a vision is often not yet sufficient. It's important that this vision is shared and so often that you um, include, involve all staff in forming this vision. And the same counts for uh, creating or developing, shaping the innovation. 
what we see that is very important uh, to create an environment in which innovation uh, can happen is that there's space for peer learning and exchange, uh, also space to provide feedback to each other as a safe environment to try out new things. And this is also often reflected in the uh, institutional mechanisms that um, the, the structure of the organization, like how well innovations are planned, having a concrete planning, um, reduce or ensure that there are not too many bureaucratic procedures, support educators who would like to innovate, but also, for example, uh, taking into account sustainability issues from the start, um, having a clear communication strategy in place concerning the innovation. And I think one of the very important things is also providing educators with space and experiment without uh, a fear of failure. Uh, a next point that is often mentioned is also to have systems in place for recognition, to make sure that you recognize as institute, as organization, um, innovation in general, and also innovative educators. And last but not least is, of course, the availability of re resources, having time to innovate, having the materials, having the structure, the infrastructure, etc. set up. So that's about the main points at the organization level. And if we move to the system level, we could look at um, regional or national level. Um, and what we see here, that it's also important to have similar support systems set up there at the regional and, and national level. So for example, systems uh, to share good practices or having resource banks available so that educators can access and use for their own practice. Um, facilitating networks of practitioners, of educators, having, for example, a platform for educators where they can share their ideas, where they can support each other, exchange ideas, etc. But also having like conferences or workshops where practices are shared or where people could, educators could work together uh, to de further develop their ideas, um, support uh, innovative behavior. Also at this level, it's important to recognize innovation. So, for example, there could be awards for innovative practices or good practices uh, for innovative educators, but also things like uh, um, recognizing like centers for vocational excellence, etc. To have recognized a whole institute in performing well can help in this regard. And then we also have, of course, the, the policies and rec uh, regulations. Um, which need to be shaped in such a way that they encourage innovation. But we also often see that these um, policies and regulations could hinder uh, innovation, could be a barrier for innovation. For example, when schools or educators perceive little autonomy uh, to shape their own educational practices to decide how they will teach specific content or the exact content to teach. One thing that I wouldn't it's not immediately like support to educators to innovate, but I think always important to take into account are also all the major global and societal changes that um, request from educators, from edu education systems to, to reform and that are shaping um, reforms and innovations. We have seen it, for example, with uh, COVID, how COVID affected our education systems and how suddenly all educa educators were kind of pushed to innovate because all education had to move online. But we also have to deal with climate change, conflict, etc. And all of these issues um, can require a redesign of our teaching and learning practices. With this, I will um, end the, the brief overview of uh, enablers. And often on the other side of the coin, there are also the bar barriers for, for innovation in teaching and learning. Um, I said before, we are still working on the, the case studies um, and we will see with the case studies to what extent they reflect the enablers I just presented based on the literature review. And of course, once we have the case studies ready, we have the cross analysis conducted, we hope to share the results with you as well. Um, and with this, I pass the floor back to Fabio. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jolene, uh, as you've as you heard. We are taking innovation very seriously, but at the same time, same, same time very cautiously. So there are so many dimensions and so many variables that we are trying to, 
to capture. And as you have seen, especially at the institutional level, but not only, I think this is true for all levels, the, the issue of uh, resources and support tools and support mechanisms uh, always appears and it makes sense. Uh, and this is actually the focus of this event. And that's why we would like now to uh, to do two things. First, to hear from uh, Olena and Merik Zell about uh, later about uh, um, our tools. So these are, will be practical tools ready, readily usable from today on. They are there and you can really, we will provide you with links um, and with ideas on how to use them. But at the same time, I would like to ask you while you listen to Olen and Merrick Sell to comment in the chat if something is not clear, if you think that uh, we could do something more, if you have some bright idea for a new tool that we could be working on. This webinar is not only to present, present is an excuse, you can find everything at the links, it's really to get your views. We are now 112. Uh, participants. Uh, so we would really like to get uh, your collective intelligence on what we could do more for you in order to improve uh, uh, or, or let's say to support your, your existing innovation potential. Okay, floor to Elena and uh, let's hear about the tools. Thank you very much, Fabio. I will just uh, share my screen. I hope it works. Please tell me if you see it now, if you see my screen. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, now we go to the presentation mode, and you should be seeing it very well. Okay. Just one second. For some reason, my screen got small, but it's okay. Okay. Uh, so. Don't see, uh, Elena, we don't see it yet. We see still. Uh, uh -huh. Two screens. We see the agenda and the the agenda of the oh, event and the PowerPoint. Okay. What about now? Yes. And now make it. Yes. Presentation mode. Yeah. Okay. Still not in presentation mode. Very strange. In my view, it's presentation mode. Yeah. This could happen sometimes. Okay. If you just minimize the things on the left, I think it's uh, more than visible. Okay. You can close it. Yeah. This is very strange because in my view, it's all fine, but. But I think it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, it's good. Just uh, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, please let me know if the slide will not be moving because sometimes it happens that I see the slide moving, but you're not. Okay. So what I'm uh, um, I would like to um, talk about is about several tools that were developed under this mysterious uh, title, creating new learning. It was already mentioned by Yolin uh, in her presentation that she said I'm presenting to you the new learning research. So the new learning research is related to the um, creating new learning or CNL uh, team's work, which also supports the community in the framework of which we are meeting today and, and having this presentation. So uh, this uh, creating new learning, um, you should see the objective. If you see it, please confirm, then that means that the presentation is, is moving well. Yeah, mm. the objective. No, it's not moving. It's still stuck. Not moving. Learning. OK. Okay, let me see, maybe yeah, this, this is really strange, okay. Okay, what about this one? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay, so it means that I will need to click menu. I have three screens and it's sometimes confusing. Okay, so the objective of the um, of the CNL is, is that uh, we are working on everything that could be defined as new learning, new ways of learning, uh, new uh, areas uh, in which uh, people learn these days, the new roles of, of uh, educators in these uh, very different times, and also the the um, yeah the learning environments and also the ways we engage into learning. And so uh, when Yolene was presenting her research, uh, that also uh, was the pre precondition or the foundation of selecting the main themes uh, of the new learning that we will be working on, which was done a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, these uh, themes uh, are the main domains in which uh, creating new learning team works, which also involves two themes on which we, I will be uh, sharing the, the work on the, uh, on the tools for ed in creative uh, innovative educators. One of them is educators and educator qualifications or new educator roles. And the one, another one is curricula and key competence. 
which is also one of the important areas of uh, supporting innovation. And um, we do it in, in different ways. As you can see that uh, there is a, an important place of research and innovation, which was just presented by Yolene at the beginning of this webinar. And also we uh, develop the, we look at, we study innovative practices. From the innovative practices, we learn about the important needs of innovators, but also we learn from uh, them on what innovation they implement and uh, uh, some of the tools that Yolene was presenting were helping us or are helping us to, to uh, find these innovative tools and find innovative uh, practices that could be shared with the others. But we also produce tools and, and uh, different instruments for learners. And uh, so, for example, uh, within the practices that already uh, generated such tools, uh, we could mention the work on the ready model, uh, which is which uh, describes the main characteristics, domains of uh, competence uh, and professional uh, qualifications of uh, modern educators, which I'll present, present in a moment. Uh, then we also work a lot on selfie for teachers, which we're not presenting today, but we could be discussing it on another occasion. Also, we have the guidelines and tools related to the key competencies. On the right, you can see this, the teacher booster and the scaffold card deck. And also we, we have the uh, guidelines helping uh, creative educators to engage video pedagogy. And uh, we also work in the area of micro-credentials. And of course, the community itself is the um, important instrument of supporting innovation in the partner countries. I hope that you see the slides uh, um, uh, which, which uh, demonstrate these tools. It's okay, no, Fabio? We are moving on the presentation. All good, all good. Okay, okay, so I'm, I'm continuing like this. Now, uh, so as I said, we will be showing you just a couple of examples. And these are the one which is related to educators and their new roles and, and new, their qualifications, and uh, uh, the one on the curricula and key competency. So let's start with the ready model. Uh, the ready model is the, uh, I'm showing you the, this uh, example because you could also uh, see the QR code and you could already uh, look at the web page and uh, uh, which which explains what what this model is. But also we have an interactive version of this model which is uh, available on the open space. And at the end uh, of this uh, part of my presentation, I'll show you a couple of QR codes that lead you to both. So the um, ready model is the result of uh, uh, a lot of uh, work with the uh, research community and with the practitioners and with peers, with uh, partners uh, in uh, supporting innovative uh, teaching and learning. Uh, and the model is uh, was developed to support educators and also those who support educators. So it's directly uh, linked to the um, to help the educators to develop themselves, to reflect on their competences, on the way they the ways they teach, on the way they they engage with the learners, but also on the on the different uh, ways to improve their own uh, competence and to be more uh, effective in, in supporting their learners. Also, uh, this model supports uh, the um, uh, those who, who develop programs of professional development of educators, including teachers, trainers, mentors, and also those who are developing uh, standards of teachers, which would be corresponding to the modern um, modern requirements for, for the uh, educators and for the teacher occup uh, occupation. And also it's uh, uh, for those who design policies and who uh, develop, for example, certification models uh, for uh, teachers, trainers, mentors, and who support uh, in general uh, improvements in the, uh, uh, in the development of educators. Um, this model is, uh, uh, we, we were very clear when we were working on it, uh, uh, on what it is for and, and what it is and what it is not. So first of all, uh, it's not a qualification framework and it's not a, a, a tool which could be directly used for appraisal of performance or for certification of teachers, for example. So it's not uh, uh, also a competence framework. However, the qualification frameworks and the competence frameworks were part of the review that was done uh, when we were working on the model. So it, uh, we were also trying to avoid the, the fact that it's uh, uh, describing a superhuman. 
super uh, man or super woman, and uh, that it will uh, it is should it should not be seen that we are uh, promoting uh, the one size fits all. So we are not uh, saying that uh, all teachers all over the world have to be uh, corresponding to the same profile. So what we are tr trying to say that we have put together uh, the most interesting uh, examples of how the new modern uh, qualities of the, of the educators could be described and how they could be proven by the practices, how uh, they could be illustrated by uh, what the teachers do when they, uh, they uh, have these uh, uh, qualities uh, corresponding to 21st century requirements. So it could be applied to any educators working in any sector, in any part of the, of the lifelong learning system. It could be adapted to any context and it could be also uh, applied in any sector practically in professional, occupational training or in general education or primary, et cetera. Um, I will not go through the whole process of how the model was developed, just would like to highlight two things. One of them is that uh, we've had several phases of uh, development of this model. And uh, uh, in the initial uh, phase, we have looked into the, we have done the literature review that uh, Yulin was also mentioning. And uh, we looked at 222 academic publications in order to uh, they, uh, this, um, digest and, and also extract uh, the most interesting trends in the um, development of new educators' profiles. And then we, we, were, uh, we had uh, some draft model that was shared with the professional community. And uh, as a result of uh, feedback received on, on this, mo mo which was called profile at that time, we have uh, developed the final version, which is now called the ready model and which has six domains of professional uh, activity of educators plus one optional. If you look here, you would see that there, there are uh, six filled in and one of them is context specific. It's a symbolic thing which demonstrates that uh, one size does not fit all and that is always uh, open to the local uh, needs and local demands. So uh, it, uh, the, um, the model uh, the includes also 22 examples of professional practices and 73 descriptors. Given the uh, short time that we have now, I'm not going to show you how the model works. And also uh, you, this could be done uh, when we will be talking about the questions and answers part, or uh, you could do it while we are uh, showing you the, the tools. Uh, to do this, you could use this, these QR codes. Please uh, visualize them on your phone if you're interested. Let me move uh, to the second tool, which is uh, a little bit different. It's a physical deck of cards. I have it here. I will show you. Uh, it's like a normal uh, deck of cards, but quite heavy and quite, quite thick. And um, a, it was developed uh, again as a result of learning about the demand um, coming from educators from, again, educators seen broadly, uh, teachers, mentors, trainers, uh, coaches, all those who support learnings in their meaningful uh, learning and, and in their self-paced learning also. Um, the uh, um, deck, uh, deck of Cards uh, is a joint uh, product, joint production with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, and it inclu includes 102 cards uh, which could be applied for this very specific task that many educators face, which could be formulated as uh, applying integrated learning outcomes approach in the development of key competences of learners. And this integrated cross-curricular uh, uh, learning outcomes development approach requires the educators to be not only uh, quite proficient in the specific key competences, but also be, being able to uh, create multidimensional um, complex learning experiences that would be working to develop simultaneously different key competences. We were uh, departing from the uh, key competences of the uh, European Union, uh, which uh, are eight uh, in the uh, EU communication uh, of 2018 on the key competences for lifelong learning. And uh, uh, four of the key competences of the EU have uh, also a very interesting instrument, which is called Key Competence Framework. Uh, these key competence frameworks available for the educators are the EntryComp, 
the live comp, the green comp, and the ditch comp. And uh, uh, they are um, uh, the, the scaffold car deck uses all the key competences from these uh, uh, from these frameworks in order to help the learners to have a very easy entry point into the task of developing learning outcomes into the integrated way. So uh, I, I tried to put together a little bit of description of uh, what are these um, uh, these cards. Uh, inside of the pack, you will find a small guide with a QR code, which will lead you to the uh, more uh, developed uh, description of how the cards could be applied. But what we, we did, we, we did a lot of bit of uh, testing when the cards were developed and uh, we tested on different groups of, of educators who were volunteers and they, um, they were those who are experts in key competence development, also those who knew about key competence but not, were not so much experts and those who were not so uh, comfortable with the key development of key competences. And all three groups uh, showed to us that they, uh, the cards are quite uh, intuitive and uh, they, they, there's a lot of uh, room for self-learning in the using them. But what you need, you need to put them on a flat surface or you could work uh, on the on the wall using magnets and you could work yourself or you work in the group and you could use setting cards which help you to set your mind into the design and the learning experience mode and you could think of whom are you developing this learning experience for uh, what are the main uh, needs of the learners um, how would you go into approach this? Is it a one-time activity, one lesson, or is it the whole course you need to develop, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Then we have a subset of planning cards, which are these horizontal cards, uh, which uh, help you to build step by step the design of the learning activity, of the learning experience. And there you you uh, you're able to select the specific competence that you will be including in your teaching. Uh, there will be, a, uh, you need to think about which, which uh, learning outcomes you will integrate, what will be the scope, what will be the resources, what level of uh, learning outcomes you would need to, uh, to uh, achieve, et cetera, et cetera. And also there is a, a subset of seven transversal competence cards, which are uh, the competences available in all, across all key competence frameworks, like uh, communication and negotiation, teamwork, critical thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And these uh, cards also, also uh, are part of the deck and the design could start also by deciding that, for example, you would like to uh, develop critical thinking of learners, and then you can go to specific frameworks to uh, merge the different, uh, integrate different learning outcomes. We also have uh, seven cards for different selected teaching methods, which are most suitable for uh, supporting integrated learning outcomes approach and also to the assessment methods, which also are selected on the basis of being most appropriate for uh, this type of uh, learning design. And they are uh, very suitable for formative assessment, but they could also be used for uh, the uh, entry assessment, for the exit assessment, for summative purposes. And deciding about the ways of, of teaching, uh, the teaching methods and the assessment methods this happens at the stage two when I was explaining about the planning card. This is where you decide which teaching and which assessment methods. If you are interested in this tool, you could go to these QR codes. I keep it a little bit on the screen so that you could visualize or you could, could take a photo. And uh, by the way, we will share the presentations so you could do it later. And the last tool quickly, uh, I will just show you that we we, these are the three different uh, formats also of teaching uh, uh, innovation uh, support tools. The first one was an online interactive model. The second one is this physical object, uh, the card deck, which you could use and manipulate it. Uh, and then the third uh, tool is called Teacher Booster and is a series of eight learning videos. Uh, it's also a joint uh, work with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, JRC. Uh, JRC was the uh, institution leading on the development of the European key competence frameworks. And so with them together, we realized that at a certain point during the COVID, during the lockdown, that uh, there is a huge need from the teacher community to work on the digital and entrepreneurial competence because the teachers were supposed to be very effective in online teaching, but also keeping their learners engaged and using different creative methods for, to support the learner motivation. So uh, at that time, we developed eight learning videos, 
and uh, we were uh, working with um, the uh, different experts who were helping uh, us to, to record these videos. And uh, they were seven experienced and very inspirational educators and one learner, one student, Eva Stojanowska. And uh, so these uh, are eight uh, videos which are quite, uh, well, they are not teasers, they are full learning videos of 15 minutes. And uh, uh, we were helping these speakers by uh, also giving them some short training on um, uh, like TEDx style spe speech. And uh, also we supply these videos with the so-called teacher booster playlists. This is a, an interactive online tool which helps to look at the different resources and the whole methodology and concept behind each video um, that uh, also these, these are simple tools, but they, there is a lot of methodological work behind them. And uh, so the learning videos were uh, mostly supporting these two competences, the digital competence and entrecomp, digital competence and entrepreneurial competence. And it was supporting uh, teachers in transforming traditional classroom-based approaches uh, into teach teaching uh, in blended uh, uh, circumstances in, uh, and uh, uh, in hybrid environment uh, when uh, teachers could be developing other competences. In particular, uh, what was um, featured in these videos was, uh, for example, the crea creativity development, the value creation pedagogy, the life skills, the social and emotional learning, design thinking, etc. These were the concepts behind these videos. And so I would also conclude this part with the teacher booster QR code. So you could also look at online. And uh, if you allow me to finish here, I think I'm well on time, Fabio. No? Uh, I'm happy to respond to the questions later. And I would like to say that uh, from this presentation of three specific tools, we have a very good transition to what Maritzel will be uh, saying, because these tools are, are available on the uh, Teacher Task Force platform. And uh, we are uh, using them in, in different, uh, in cooperation with different partners so that uh, they could be available not only through the community of Innovative Educators and ETF website, but mm -hmm. also through all the places and platforms uh, online where learners, uh, teachers could uh, could access them and be supported. I'm happy to respond to questions later at any moment, and I'm not sharing my screen. Thank anymore. you. Thank you very much, Olena. Everything is super clear. I know it's not an easy mission to present. Uh, no, it was fine. <laughs> it's with a lot of work uh, behind. And while you, mm, you are thinking, we still have three minutes uh, for questions, uh, but while you think of your questions, I would like to 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 explain what was meant before when I said uh, um, that you can express ideas through the community. So, for example, you can, of course, use these tools. You've seen the links. Uh, you can take them, use them, uh, print them, ask for us to send them to you if we speak about the cards. So they are there at your disposal and we are translating them in a number of languages. Fine. But if you think that with one of these tools, you could uh, do something different. So you would like to work with us uh, on uh, improving or adapting or uh, doing something new with the tools, feel free to get in touch with us. We cannot promise, of course, that we will be uh, doing anything uh, that you, you wish, but uh, these tools, again, are not only resources ready to use, but also excuses to engage with uh, with the community. And Olena, we have been, we have had already a number of uh, let's say, uh, requests in this sense, and as much as possible, we try to respond, right? Yes, yes. Uh, on the scaffold, for example, uh, these are, uh, they, they're heavy like perfume packs, and uh, we cannot send individual uh, boxes of scaffold uh, to individual educators, unfortunately, but we will have a, a PDF version that could be printed uh, at school or at home, uh, it will be A4 format, and it will be, I think, by by New Year, by 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 the, by the um, uh, festive uh, days, we will have it online. Uh, and uh, on request, we could also um, share with you. These are these are all uh, open source Creative Commons 4.0 uh, tools, so we can share with you the source files uh, for producing the versions. For example, in different languages, we are tra uh, translating. Uh, um, ready model was translated into several languages already. Also, scaffold we have already four or five languages 
translations and we will be producing for different partner countries if there is a, a, a requirement, uh, a request, uh, and we will be happy to share if you would like to do it and we can provide you with, with the materials. Perfect. I see no direct questions at the moment, but uh, let me remind you that after Merrick's presentation, we're going to have uh, an open, what we call co-creation session, where during which Roberto uh, will be facilitating some questions related to, to these, to all the tools that you will hear about. So I would like, I think I see a lot of thank you uh, for Olena. Thank you messages in the chat, which means everything was clear. And thank you to the colleagues also for having shared all the different many links. And now uh, the floor to our dear partners in this webinar, Merit Zell from the International Task Force on Teachers for Education 2030. Now I can read the whole name in your, in your background slide. Floor is yours. Excellent. Thank you very much, Fabio. Um, so I'll try to share my screen. And let me know if this works well. I'm trying to put it in presentation mode. I'm not sure if it's working. I can see the this, this slides, but not in presentation mode. Do you think it's big enough or shall we? I think I can read everything. Maybe go one slide. I can read it, yes. Maybe okay. if you click on home on top of the screen so that you hide the all the all the the tools there yes exactly like this is fantastic perfect so thank you again for the invitation to co-organize this session it's a real pleasure to be here on behalf both of unesco and the teacher task force to share with the community of innovative um, educators two tools that we have developed um, to support teachers the teacher that and the teacher resource center. Now, um, before that, uh, I think it's interesting to frame these two tools in um, UNESCO's vision of teachers. And for this, we need to look into the report Reimagining Our Futures Together that was launched in 2021 and that invites um, governments, uh, citizens, organizations to kind of forge a new social contract for education in order to be able to build uh, just sustainable societies. And there are two aspects I would like to highlight of this uh, new social contract. On the one hand, it reiterates that education is a public good. Mary, tell, they, sorry to interrupt you. They are asking if you can uh, uh, hide a bit your voice. They say that sound is a bit uh, low. Low. Yes. Ah, okay. Can you hear me better now? Much better now. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So I was saying that in order to understand the two tools that I will be presenting today, the Global Teacher Campus and the Teacher Resource Center, uh, we should look at UNESCO's vision of teachers. And for these, uh, we need to look into the report, Reimagining Our Futures Together, that was launched in 2021 and which invites societies, so governments, citizens, organizations, to create a new social contract for education. And this new social contract, on the one hand, reiterates that education is a public good, and on the other hand, it, uh, it emphasizes that um, education and the right to education should be broadened, should be widened so that everybody everywhere can have access to lifelong learning. And now something interesting in this report is that teachers are particularly um, highlighted and in concretely their, their role as transformative educators. And what the report does is to say that uh, the teaching profession should be recast as a collaborative effort, that it should be based on teamwork and that teachers should be seen as reflective practitioners. That is to say professionals who reflect on their own practice, who create new knowledge, and who can contribute even to the research community with their practical knowledge. So this means that reflection, research, and creation of new knowledge and learning methods uh, should become an integral part of the teaching profession. And for this, it is crucial to provide um, good training, good support throughout a teacher's career. 
And so now if we move on to two of the tools we have created to provide this support that is crucial, um, the first one is the Global Teacher Campus. And to understand it, we need to go back in time and remember um, the unprecedented disruptions that the COVID pandemic um, brought in education systems. Uh, we all know that disparities were exacerbated. Uh, there was a digital gap. And for teachers particularly, it meant that they had to very quickly adapt to online and hybrid uh, teaching, sometimes with very little preparation or even no preparation at all. And in this context, UNESCO very quickly mobilized support to make sure that teaching and learning could continue. And it established the Global Education Coalition, uh, which has uh, 175 members uh, from the UN family, but also from the private sector and from the civil society and academia. And the Global Teacher Campus uh, is a flagship program of the Global Education Coalition. Now, if we take a closer look, um, today the Global Teacher Campus offers a curated catalog of 38 courses for teachers, which includes self-paced and facilitated courses. Um, it's important to highlight that these courses have been vetted by UNESCO to ensure that they are of high quality. Um, and in terms of content, Whereas in the beginning, because this was created, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, the focus was on courses um, about uh, making a, a pedagogical use of technologies. So it was very focused on online teaching and hybrid teaching. Now there has been an expansion of the catalog to also include other aspects that proved crucial during the pandemic, such as social emotional learning, um, psychological support, and the affective dimension, which was also very relevant. There is also another course that is coming up, still under development, um, which is on the core of learning, how to condense curriculum when there is limited uh, time available to deliberate. So this one is currently under preparation, and we hope to be able to make it available very soon. In terms of the languages, um, so most of the courses are available in English, French, and Spanish, but you will see on the screen that we have listed a series of other languages that are also represented in the catalog. And so you are invited to take a look at the catalog and see if there would be any courses that would be of your interest. Um, well, something important to note is that for the self-paced courses, uh, they are directly available to individual educators. For the facilitated courses that require um, synchronous sessions, uh, we will need to develop an ad hoc plan for the deployment in collaboration with the partners and with the support of UNESCO. And so you are very welcome to contact us if you have interest and we can explore uh, if we can make this happen for you. The second resource that I wanted to talk about is the Teacher Resource Center. And this one, as, as colleagues were, mentioned, were mentioning before, uh, was developed by the Teacher Task Force. Um, and just for you to know what the Teacher Task Force is, in a nutshell, let me tell you that it is a global alliance that focuses exclusively on teachers and teaching issues. Um, UNESCO is actually a member of this alliance and it hosts its secretariat. Um, we have currently uh, 167 members. Uh, among those, there are more than 100 countries uh, represented by designated officials, but we also have other international organizations. Uh, we have development agencies uh, and we have also organizations from the private sector and foundations who are committed to the advancement uh, of teacher issues. Um, it was created in 2008, and the main goal of the DTF is to empower teachers uh, by making sure that they remain at the top of the education agenda. Uh, there is a special contribution of the DTF 
to uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4C, which aims to substantially increase the supply of qualified teachers by 2030. So that's a little bit the background of who created the, the Teacher Resource Center. And the Teacher Task Force actually has two ways of supporting teachers um, through the mobilization of knowledge. On the one hand, at the policy level, uh, and this is very much related to what Jolin uh, was mentioning before about the enabling factors at the system level. Uh, by policy here, we refer to decisions that are made by the relevant authorities on characteristics of the education system that will affect teachers. So this could include decisions on how teachers are trained, um, how they are recruited, uh, what are their working conditions, the remuneration, um, how they are evaluated. Um, and, and the truth is that there are a series of optimal conditions for creative and, and reflective educators to, to flourish and to thrive. And so um, one way that the teacher task force to, has to promote these uh, favorable conditions is by mobilizing knowledge on um, teacher policies from around the world that have uh, followed a holistic approach uh, to create a sustainable, a creative, and an empowered uh, teacher workforce. And this is done through the Knowledge Hub. So here you have the hyperlink. And uh, when you receive the presentation, you will be able to click on it directly. The Knowledge Hub. Uh, monitors uh, resources that are relevant for policymakers. Uh, this includes uh, case studies, academic articles, um, national policies on teachers. It currently hosts uh, over 500 resources. And even if the main audience of the hub are policymakers, we believe that this can also be interesting for educators who want to be um, to stay abreast of the latest developments in, in teacher policy. Now, the second uh, way the TTF has of uh, supporting teachers is by mobilizing um, knowledge to support innovative teaching practices. And this is done through the dedicated uh, platform for teachers, which is called the Teacher Resource Center. And this is the one that we launched this year in last spring. Um, it currently hosts about 60 resources um, of, of different types. So mainly um, resources to be used in the classroom, pedagogical resources, but also professional development opportunities. So now it's still growing and we really hope to grow it substantially uh, next year. If we look more closely at what the Teacher Resource Center offers to educators, um, so we can see it as offering comprehensive support to the teacher's knowledge needs as reflective practitioners. And what does this mean? So basically, um, this has been context, uh, conceptualized um, by meaning that teacher's professional practice extends over a variety of contexts and environments that can be understood as an ecosystem. Um, in this ecosystem, teachers apply pedagogical tools, they observe the results that these tools bring, um, they reflect on their own practice, they identify uh, the need for acquiring new competencies, they follow formal training or they engage in communities of practice, and then they apply what they have learned again in their practice. So this is a cycle and that continues uh, throughout a teacher's career. And so in relation to this framework, there are three resources that we have uh, included in the Teacher Resource Center. Um, the first type are resources to be used in the classroom, so to support the teaching practice. And this includes open educational resources, learning activities, assessment materials, teacher guides, and for instance, the tools that were just presented in, in the previous presentation. Um, the second type are resources that supports uh, this reflection that teachers have after their practice. And, and the resources include, uh, for instance, summaries of research findings that are relevant to pedagogical practices and to learning methods. 
And the third type of resources um, include professional development opportunities, meaning self-paced courses and facilitated courses. And here there is a connection with the Global Teacher Campus because this is a specific focus of the Global Teacher Campus, as I was saying. And uh, whereas we had 38 courses on the Global Teacher Campus, in the Teacher Resource Center, we aim to have a broader offer because we are not vetting individually every single course. This, just to give you a very brief overview of what we have currently, as I was saying, almost 60 resources in the Teacher Resource Center of the three types I mentioned. Um, currently, there is a predominance of uh, teaching resources for the classroom and professional development opportunities. All educational levels are covered. And currently, there is a predominance of primary and secondary education um, resources. But we also have some of, for non-formal education. Uh, all curricular areas are covered. And we do have a series of thematic highlights uh, for key uh, emerging and priority areas, like uh, education for sustainable development, global citizenship education, uh, gender responsive pedagogies, and so on. So um, most of the resources are produced by TTF members, um, including the ETF. As I said, we don't individually vet the content of every resource, but to ensure the quality, all of the resources come from recognized organizations in, in the domain of education. Um, because we want these materials to be widely reusable, most of them are available under an open license. And those that are not available under an open license, at least they are freely accessible to be, to be consulted. So here, um, just another quick overview of what you can find in the Teacher Resource Center. There are two basic types in terms of coverage. We have the global resources on the one hand and the region specific resources. So the global resources refers to those that have been formulated and designed in a way that they can be almost directly applicable without any further adaptations because they, they take a global perspective. And here you have some examples. Uh, there is a, a teacher's guide on the prevention on violent extremism by UNESCO. There is an anti-bullying handbook uh, developed by the government of Ireland. Uh, there's a teaching toolkit on the ozone layer by the United Nations and so on. And you also have some uh, region specific resources. Um, which basically have been designed or trialed for specific countries or regions. And so this can still be used in other contexts, but it will require some further adaptation beyond the links to the local curriculum to make them relevant uh, to the, you know, to a different local context. So here are some examples of a couple of guides of transformative pedagogy um, for peace building in North Africa and a gender responsive pedagogy in early childhood education, which has been tested in, in three African countries, in Rwanda, in South Africa, and in Zambia. So this gives you an idea of the kind of contents that you can find in, in the Teacher Resource Center. And now, uh, to give you an idea of how you can actually access the content, um, so you can find it on the TTF Knowledge Platform through the link that is available on this slide and that you will receive later. Uh, the interface is available in four languages, Arabic, English, French, and Spanish. And because we know that there are different uh, profiles of users, so educators may come with different background knowledge and with different um, objectives in mind, uh, the search strategies that are supported in the platform are varied. So on the one hand, it is possible to do free textual searches, but it is also possible to explore the catalog in a more structured way using the system of filters that we have created. And that allows you to uh, filter down by topic, by curriculum area, or by thematic highlight, for instance. 
Now, once you access um, the relevant resource that you're interested in, a couple of ideas that I would like to share. Um, in the catalog entry, you can either uh, directly download the file or you will be redirected to an external hosting website from which you can download or view the resource. And you also have very important copyright information um, that you should check before using the, the resource. As I was saying, a lot of the resources are available under open licenses, uh, such as Creative Commons licenses, but some others are available under traditional uh, copyright licenses where you will not be able to translate or further disseminate the resources. So you are strongly encouraged to check these copyright notices before making use of the resources. And now what do we have in mind for next year? Um, so I was, as I was saying, this was launched just some months ago. Uh, we are hoping to substantially increase the number of resources in collaboration with DTF members and also with, uh, with, with other uh, content creators. Uh, we particularly want to strengthen key areas such as digital technologies and greening education, artificial intelligence and so on. Um, you know, the ultimate vision for the Teacher Resource Center is to become like a, um, a platform to support the global community of educators by maximizing the potential of open educational resources and, and fostering this um, sharing of good practices across countries and regions. So we really hope that next year, the, you know, the catalog, the portfolio will grow and will be strengthened for this. Something else that we are doing is to enhance the dissemination mechanisms for the content in the platform. And for this, we are developing a notification system uh, where you will be able to register and you will receive updates on the new catalog editions. So this is under development, but if you are interested in registering, please uh, do contact us. You can send an email to this address and once the form is available, we will be sharing it with you so that you can you can register to to be informed. And I think I'll stop here. Uh, I'll be very happy to take any questions, and I hope you you'll take the time to explore the the two resources. Thank you, thank you very much, Maritzel. Uh, actually, it's great to see that we converge. I think uh, the the issue of the reflection I like very much in your model uh, the fact that you you know teacher learn apply and reflect and it's a continuous circle and actually the fact that we we are designing these self reflection clubs uh, is also another good way good possibility to cooperate and uh, especially I like very much this idea of uh, let's say collecting uh, open educational resources so we, actually this was the theme of our last webinar we had a month ago specifically focusing on this so more than one uh, more than one uh, connection point uh, and more things to do together there is one question uh, I, i'm not sure you know all the resources by heart uh, in these 100 plus resources but the question by fuzun uh, is teachers have a critical role to play in career development of their students? Uh, and she asks, or he sh uh, the question is, any courses or resources that highlight their role for career education? So thank you very much for the question. I don't know all of them by heart, but I know that for now we don't have a course specifically on that. But I am taking notes as a relevant area, and I hope to be that we will be able to identify some and to make them available in the TRC. So I really encourage uh, members of the community to register, um, you know, when we have the notification system, so that you can be informed on new resources in your areas of of interest. Fantastic. And uh, uh, in order, we have a few more comments there, and I've seen that in the meantime, also Lena was responding to some requests on how to facilitate translation uh, of, uh, of the different tools by the ETF. But in order to collect, as you were suggesting, these ideas, now I'm passing the floor for the last session. We have still 20 minutes to go, and we typically 
who like to end on time because we know how precious uh, time of teachers especially is. So I'm giving the floor to my colleague Roberto for this uh, session, trying to where we aim actually at gathering ideas on uh, how to improve and how to foster the use of these many tools. So thank you again, Olena. Thank you again, Maritzel. Please stay there because you might be requested to contribute to the idea or to respond to the ideas that might appear during the session. Robbie, please. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Hello, everybody. Well, first of all, I would like uh, to announce the creation of a brand new page in our open space uh, platform. Uh, as you know, the community is built of more than 1,300 members. Many educators have already uploaded their innovative practice on open space. This was done especially through uh, the awards that we organized uh, last year and all the process of validation and uh, further elaboration on the practices. Uh, so we have almost 100 now practices in our database, but we would like to give further visibility to, to the practices uh, and uh, to share with uh, all of you and also inspire you uh, how we created and elaborated the <clears throat> the um, all these uh, all these tools uh, and uh, so we um, had uh, the idea of having some let's call them testimonials and the concept behind it uh, was to show how educators develop competencies of students and uh, and learners so i think that uh, we are perfectly in line uh, with the presentations we had uh, we had today because uh, they were all pushing very much the importance of uh, of key competencies uh, and so uh, the importance of transmit and uh, to uh, develop competencies of students and not only the knowledge of uh, some specific uh, subject so what we did was uh, simply matching some educators uh, with uh, one of the key competencies one of the competencies that olena was also uh, presenting uh, beforehand according to their uh, to their practice so the reference uh, that we had in mind was uh, the key competencies for lifelong learning so now i'm showing on the chat uh, what i'm talking about so the publication about the key competencies uh, so competencies oriented so it's focused on the outcomes on the learning progress progress uh, and uh, on the fact that learning can happen in the diverse range uh, of context. So what we did, uh, as I said before, was identifying a testimonial of the competence, uh, thanks to his, her practice, uh, and link directly with one of the competence. Now I would like to share my screen to show you our um, um, open space page. It's this one. <clears throat> Hope you can see it. And uh, so testimonials to empower innovative educators. This is the explanation of what we have done and uh, the description of uh, the process behind it. And we collected five uh, um, testimonials of uh, a key competence. So for example, here you can see the video because what we asked the testimonials was uh, to record a short video about uh, three minutes where the testimonial was introducing him or herself and describing the practice and most of all describing how he or she was able to develop the competence with the, with the, the, the with the learner so the importance of this key competence in the uh, transmission of knowledge and uh, and uh, and of course of uh, of competencies and to teach uh, students and learners so we had the five volunteers they were so kind to record the video you can see you can watch the video in this page Maybe I can <clears throat> put it in the chat, and uh, you can find uh, all this video in the chat in the um, in the open space page. And for example, we ask uh, Javad, our friend Javad from Morocco, 
to share his practice fostering the development of mathematical mathematical competence. What it what it what does it mean? It means applying the being able to apply mathematical thinking and insight in order to solve a range of problems in everyday situation. This is one of the definition that we have in the key competencies uh, publication. So the same, for example, for <clears throat> for the following one, our friend from Armenia, Lucina Topchan, uh, was matched with uh, the development of personal, social, and learning to learn competence, which means the ability to reflect upon oneself, uh, manage time and information, and so on. So this is the, the definition. So here you can see the video. In the video, as I said before, the testimonials are introducing themselves very, very quickly are introducing their practice and most of all are highlighting how this competence is important for, for learning and how students could get this competence. And uh, of course, we also put the link to the practice from, from the database and so on with the other videos. This is Igar from Azerbaijan. This is Gulbira from Kazakhstan. And this is Alba uh, Kruja from, from Albania. So we, here we have the five. So please, uh, you are, of course, uh, welcome to go to the page, uh, to leave your comments. Uh, and uh, as, as I said before, the main scope of this um, operation was to give visibility, not only to the practices, but also to our members, to our community members. and. Uh, uh, to make them show how they were able to develop the confidence so they could be inspiring from, for, for you. Hope that, uh, and of course, once again, I don't know if everybody is, uh, every testimonial is here at our webinar, but uh, thank you again because they, they were so kind to, to record this, uh, this video. And um, so I think we have still uh, maybe 10, uh, 10 minutes or a little bit more. Um, so uh, if there is uh, some, uh, some questions, uh, we also prepare this, uh, um, um, we also prepared um, a Jamboard as usual in order to, um, ask you for your comments uh, about uh, uh, some, some aspects that we discussed uh, during our webinar today. So I'm putting here the link to the Jamboard. So please, if you want uh, to, um, to go to this page or if you want uh, to open your microphone or if you want to uh say something in the in the chat so what is the main scope of uh, this uh, um of this board we would like to know if first of all you were aware of these supporting tools uh, i mean the, those that were presented today do you know how can we promote the use of these tools and on the other hand if you can suggest other similar tools and practices that you know in order to foster innovation in education. And uh, if there is something that we can do, I, when I mean as ETF, uh, to make them more useful for you. Some of the mm, questions I was, uh, or comments I was reading in chat were about translation. Of course, this is one of the way to, to further promote them. But of course, if you want uh, to, um, I maybe I'm sharing the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the board. So if you want, you can write yourself with the post-it, <clears throat> like uh, uh, translating tools, save, and then you can stick your post-it here so that uh, Okay, <laughs> I was I was writing exactly the same as another participant, and uh, and then we can see your um, opinion and your feedback and so on. And of course, if you also in the meantime have something more you would like to know from um, from uh, from our speakers, 
especially because I think we we had a very nice uh, uh, introduction to a lot of uh, different uh, tools for teachers. So maybe uh, you were aware about uh, them. Maybe you didn't know. Maybe you have in mind something similar that you would like to to promote. So please don't uh, don't hesitate to to write, but not only to write if you want to. <clears throat> say your um, your opinion you are you are free to do it as i said uh, here the the process is very simple you just go here and write your uh, your post it and then you stick it on the on the board um I think, Sorry. Robert, there was a, there was a question uh, earlier, uh, rather philosophical. How do you, that we can take, uh, maybe um, pass to Olena and Maritzel, how do you differentiate among teacher's education and teacher training? I don't know if this is mainly semantic or if there is something more specific. Whilst the participants propose their idea, I don't know, Olena or Maritzel, if you want to jo to respond to this. Yeah, I can I can give an answer from our end. So basically, in short, when we say teacher education, we are referring to initial teacher education. When we say teacher training, we are most of the times referring to continuous professional development. So training that happens while teachers are already in service. That's the way we use it in general. I fully agree with the, with the definition and would like to say that we should be uh, trying to um, take it easy about the differences in the use of terminology in our area. Normally, uh, there are different um, terms, uh, some, sometimes overlapping or covering similar things. So, for example, uh, sometimes we uh, use the in-service and pre-service uh, teacher training, meaning exactly the initial would be pre-service and continuous will be in-service. And also, for example, teacher professional development, CPD, continue, uh, as an acronym. So we practically are saying that uh, in um, uh, pre-service or initial training, uh, the uh, people are trained to, to receive a, a state certificate, uh, a formal certificate of uh, allowing them to, to be employed as, as a teacher. And in the, in the uh, in-service training normally, it's professional development may lead to some promotion or, and generally aiming at um, improving certain areas of competence and certain qualification aspects of, of the person to allow um, professional growth and, and lifelong learning of teachers, of educators. That would Thank be you. a broader definition. Thank you very much. In the meantime, we have... Uh... One comment by Marina, we may, maybe we collect different experience, different models of competence and compare. This is a suggestion, Marina, or uh, for, an, for an, uh, I don't know if you want to take the floor or to explain better. And then we have a comment. I, by... I, can, I yeah. can explain. Yeah. Please. Uh, because my idea, I know so more people who also strong interest of different model how to uh, create uh, competence and develop competence. And uh, every time each uh, of uh, faculty, each of teacher to use uh, different model. We can collect different idea, different model, how to create uh, competence, how to develop competence, for example, maybe soft skills, Skills in fields, maybe in special fields like math and or IT, and then uh, we all have a more different uh, idea, more, more different like uh, Lego puzzles, and uh, can use in different situation, different model. like uh, big collections different instrument because sometimes uh, in one case better use uh, one model in different case we can use different model but uh, sometimes uh, we say different model but uh, see say uh, like same mod mod model but in different uh, color 
Thank you. I think it's uh, yeah an interesting suggestion to have this uh, context-sensitive uh, uh, collection of resources. I think it's uh, yeah very very good idea. <laughs> In the meantime, while you keep on uh, commenting on the on the board, uh, I see a comment, uh, a question actually, well, a comment by Khadija on the difficulty of uh, let's say. Uh, Using these tools, of course, especially in, uh, let's say, she's writing from Algeria, saying we can offer all our skills, but difficulty remains. Of course, we know it's not easy. And these tools are sometimes, my personal comment is that sometimes they are they are produced by professionals and not by educators. So sometimes I feel a, a bit a level of complexity, which might be uh, a, a bit of a barrier, but not all, not all the times, luckily. And then we have a, a question uh, by Shah. Thanks. Uh, so you think that teacher's education should be mandatory for being a teacher? Mm -hmm. Let's see what uh, Olen and Merixel think. It's uh, interesting. Merixel, do you want me to start? Or would you like to go first? It's your turn, Olena. <laughs> okay, it's my turn. It's a it's philosophical question, of course. Uh, if we would like to 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 smile, but um, um, we are living in the uh, times when the um, when the the line between the formal education and non formal learning is blurring. So a lot of learning is taken in non formal. Uh, environment and the non-formal non conditions and through non-formal means. But there are some occupations which require a formal uh, certificate or formal um, a document that would confirm the uh, ability of the person to implement this role. So teachers are one of these uh, occupations which require such document. And depending on the uh, different on the, which country it is. Uh, there are different rules, different levels of education involved, etc. And uh, also, we, uh, as I was explaining in my presentation, we are talking in our work of CNL of creating new learning uh, about educators as a broader concept that includes different uh, people uh, who are supporting professionally or who are supporting learners in a structured way, who are helping learners to learn. And if these are trainers and mentors, they may require some certificate or they might be doing it as, as volunteers. And in, in the formal education, yes, indeed, the formal document is needed, but which document will depend on the country, on the um, education system, regulations and laws, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it could be also uh, uh, possible that the um, teacher education uh, could be implemented in more flexible ways by collecting different certificates that would allow the uh, teacher or trainer to uh, support learners. But again, it depends on the system. So Maricel, <laughs> for you to, to take over. Thank you. Yes, I, I completely agree. I think that something key to highlight and that we are pushing for from UNESCO and that is part of that vision that I mentioned in the report, Reimagining Our Futures Together, is that um, we should push for the professionalization of the teaching profession, because it's important to elevate its status uh, to, you know, that it is uh, recognized uh, by society. And something we need to keep in mind is that a professional community has a set of expert knowledge. And this knowledge, is acquired through training. Now, the forms that this training can take are varied, as Olena was saying, but a key notion is that being a teacher is being a professional, uh, an expert, and so not everybody has this professional expertise. And I think this is something we should really protect as a notion. So I would say, yes, a special, specific training education is needed to become a professional teacher. Okay, clear and very elaborated answers, uh, thanks to both. Uh, we have a number of uh, thank you messages, so I would just... Ah, Olena, you wanted to say something more, please. Just very quickly, I, I see that there are, there are many uh, cards, uh, uh, feedback uh, stickers that are uh, telling us that what a pity that uh, teachers did not know or we don't know about these tools. This is exactly, we would like to have your uh, suggestions, your hints, how do we make sure that 
the educators, the teachers, the trainers have maximum access uh, to the tools and that they, we're trying to facilitate the easy access to the support uh, instruments uh, and trying to make them very simple and, and practical. So if you could make suggestions beyond what we are doing, we are, we are doing a lot of uh, workshops and online and face-to-face, -face. Uh, please uh, help us and we will be very happy to, to share these tools with, with more uh, educators possible. Absolutely, yes. This is actually the secret objective of this of this webinar to try to understand how we can reach more and more teacher with uh, with our support services. I think we uh, time is almost. And that's why we 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 ask why how we can promote the use of these tools. <laughs> I don't know, Rob Robert, if you want to go through the ideas which are emerging. Well, I I well I see that. Uh, Couple of uh, comments were um, exactly what uh, Olena was talking about. So, how to make people, uh, teachers, aware of this, uh, of these tools. So, this is very, very important to know. And uh, so, we, uh, I think that we have to further promote the use and the knowledge about uh, these instruments. And um, well, translation is one of the things that people were asking for. And I also see some um web websites i guess about uh, other kind of resources and the other thing that i wanted to underline is uh, somebody mentioned the um, oer and uh, so this is uh, another topic that we have uh, dealt with uh, in, in the past webinar by the way so i think that uh, maybe people could also uh, go back to the past webinars and take a look at the recording or at the presentations that we collected exactly for uh, for this. So we, we dedicated a couple of hours uh, exactly to this uh, uh, theme. So maybe this could be important and very much related to uh, today's topic. Thank you. And I see more, more ideas are coming. Thank you very much. Uh, re remember and be assured that we will make good use of these suggestions and try to adapt our agenda. And of course, our friends and colleagues of the teacher task force as well. We'll try to do what we can. I mean, to support teachers, imagine the difficulty of working at the global level or as with as many countries as we do in the ETF. So bear with us. We cannot do everything that, uh, that uh, let's say, everyone is needing, but we'll do our best uh, to take into, into consideration your needs. Now, my two takeaways are that number one, there are enough uh, tools, or at least uh, there is an, a relevant number of tools that are ready to be used and especially ready to be digested by teachers. So uh, there is an effort by organizations like the TTF and the ETF to facilitate the, the let's say the use of these tools by teachers in different contexts, different languages, different levels of experience and so on. On the other hand, there is a big lack of knowledge about these tools, actually. This is, uh, and this webinar was useful, but I think we need to do more to really try to reach, uh, I don't know if through teachers' networks, uh, through ministers of education, we need to have, uh, I think, to devote some time to make sure that uh, as many educators as possible, teachers, but also trainers and mentors and coaches, as was mentioned before, really at least have access to these uh, to these uh, platforms and tools. And number three, I think uh, it's a good message that uh, we are open, both our organizations are open for suggestions on how to make these tools more accessible, more useful and more usable also by, by all of you. Thank you, Mari, Marina, I also to a beautiful word to end this, uh, this webinar. Thank you for your passion to teaching and thank you, uh, you are still uh, about 100 participants. So just the last uh, thank you to our speakers and to all the participants. And I have the feeling that we might organize another joint webinar with the teacher task force next year, maybe to, to see how we are, how we have developed since, uh, since today. And for the rest, uh, happy holidays and happy winter holidays to all of you. Summer holidays to some, I've seen some somebody from Argentina before on the chat, so in my, it might also be summer for somebody down there. And for the rest, have a very good afternoon and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.